The video you're watching right now, it's a Gaussian splatting environment, it was captured from a real location right here in Manchester. I scanned this location using my 360 camera and after completing a few important steps, I imported the entire model directly in a real engine. So in this video, I'm going to explain you full process, step by step, how I scanned the location, which camera I use and what software I use to complete this process and most important, what mistakes I've done along the way so you can avoid them if you want to try this for yourself. So don't don't skip the video because you're gonna miss important steps from the process and probably you're gonna get stuck along the way. To capture the location I use my Insta360 X2, it's a solid camera, records in manual mode and gives me a full resolution which is great. Along with the camera I had the selfie stick which I used to mount the camera. I picked one location in the city, the one that I wanted to scan for a long time and the method I used was very simple. First I walk left to right in a zigzag pattern across the entire bridge with a selfie stick above my head, exactly how you see in this footage. In this way you cover more details of the bridge. If you want to shoot in a busy place, you should wake up in the morning otherwise you'll have people walking all around you which is very annoying. I did a few tests before and it was a lot of people and it was very frustrating. Once I reached the end of the area I wanted to scan, I turn around and walk back in a straight line. No zigzag movement from left to right anymore. Then I did one more pass with the camera positioned close to the ground. The first time I scanned the bridge, I skipped the floor and the result looked a bit funny. By lowering the camera I thought that would fix the problem but in the end it didn't. All this was captured in a single recording and it took around 8 minutes to complete. If you own an Insta360, you automatically have access to Insta360 Studio. Just go on their website, download the app and install it into your machine. Insert the SD card and the app should instantly ask if you like to import your capture video which is very useful. Select your file on the right hand side, then head to the export tab, go on the 360 video, pick your file name and export the file into your desired location. Set the bitrate to maximum, resolution to the highest available and encoding format. In my case, I'm gonna use H.264. Depending on your footage length, this step is gonna take a while. In my case, it took around 30 minutes to process and export the video. At this point, the file is ready to go. If you watch my other tutorials, you know I always put extra effort into this because even small adjustments make huge difference in the end. After some quick tweaks in Premiere Pro, the footage looks a little bit much nicer. You can see before and after here, it's a very small change, but trust me, in the end, all the details matter. Hey YouTube, before we move on, I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. I really wanna hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year and you are the only one who can help me. So please don't forget to subscribe. Now back to the video. Once you color grade the footage, either you export it from Premiere or Insta360 Studio, I used the 360 portable kit by Cinema to be. He created a script that combines FFmpeg with Alice Vision. I'm going to link his tool and his YouTube channel down in the description below. All you need to do is download the tool and open the bat file. Drag the exported 360 video file. Check how many frames you want. I think this is going to split each second from the video in one frame. For the testing I use one and I let it run. This automatically will create a folder with a bunch of image sequences. Just open up the folder and you can see them right there. Next we are going to drag the folder that just been created in the second part of the script. This process will split your 360 images into multiple 2D images that represents that photo. In my case I set to have 8 splits with a resolution of 1200 and a field of view of 100. Depends how many images you have in the folder this step can be quick or you might have to wait some time. Now if we put everything side by side first you would have the 360 video that you capture it with the camera and then you split that video into 360 images and then later the 360 image has been split in 8 image. Crazy how powerful this tool is. At this stage you can either use reality capture to speed up the process or go directly in post shot. For me reality capture struggled to align all these images so I'm gonna skip this step and jump directly into post shot. Now one thing to notice post shot is no longer free or sort of. You'll need a subscription but the advantage is that lets you save the file that can be loaded into an Unreal Engine with the plugin, so this is very useful. Sadly, exporting as a PLY is no longer available in the free version, but don't worry, you can still follow along with this tutorial. 
Once you open PostShot, I drag the folder with the split images to drag in the last folder you just created. Drag it into the software, keep all the files, max image count, switch to Splat MCMC. This is going to give a better results, but it's gonna take a longer time, so be aware. Start training immediately and stop it at 300,000 steps. The more steps you have, the sharper and cleaner the result will be. For me, it took around nine hours to train this file. After that, the result looked amazing, better than the first few tries. I could finally explore the Splat inside PostShot. On the left, you can switch between different viewings. Point Cloud Camera Lightman, which did a very great job. If you see fuzziness, use Cleanup Tool to remove all the unwanted artifacts. And very important, very, very, very important, don't forget to save the file. Now it comes the fun part. Yes, you can bring your spots directly into Unreal Engine. Open Unreal Engine, start a new project in first person mode, Once the level started, make sure to enable the PostShot plugin under the Edit Plugins and type PostShot. And give a quick restart. When the project opens, I deleted the default shapes, leaving just the floor and the blue cubes. Then I drag my save PostShot file into the new folder inside the Unreal Engine. If you want to move the splat in the environment, the pivot point probably is gonna be off. So to fix this, I place an actor in the center of the bridge, then made the splat a child of the actor so I could position everything correctly. From there, I adjusted the scale of the splat. The real bridge has six meters wide, so I aligned six Unreal Engine cubes side by side to get the dimension right. Just remember, always lock the scale so you don't stretch the model weirdly. Once the splat is aligned, you can hit play and explore the splat. But there is a catch. Gaussian splatting files don't usually have geometry, which means we don't have physical collision. To fix this, I built a basic shape in Unreal Engine. I created the floor, the side fences of the bridge, stairs, light poles. Essentially, I created the entire environment using cubes. When I finished, I made those cubes invisible in the details panel. Select all the cubes, type visible and then check that bit so the game had proper collusion while keeping the splat visual. If you want to play in the game, just move the cubes however you want. Ideally, it should be positioned on the geometry that you just created. Finally, I moved the spawn point to always start at this little path before the bridge. Now, every time I hit play, I'm going to start from this location. And that's pretty much it. This is how you bring any locations from reality directly in Unreal Engine. All you have to do is to have a 360 camera and follow this workflow. You can bring anything inside and you can play, you can create your own video game. So thank you for watching. I really wanna hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I know you are the only one who can help me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.